Hi, everyone. I've had a number of requests for a 45-minute class working on extension, on posture, on chest opening. So I've kind of combined those all into this one class. It is also an osteoporosis-friendly class because we will not be doing any rotation of the spine and any flexion of the spine. I want you to start off with three heavy red springs. Have your foot bar up, and you will only be needing your box today. So have that off to the side. We're going to lay down and do just a little bit of footwork to get warmed up. Go ahead and lay down onto your machine. And we're going to start with the balls, the feet on the bar, and a little V with your heels together, your knees nice and wide. Let those ribs draw down and together. Feel your abdominals activate. Feel your tailbone pushing heavy so you're neutral in your pelvis. Squeeze your heels together. Reach your arms long. And let's start pushing the carriage all the way out and resisting the carriage in. Continuing to push those heels together the entire time. Again, we're working on posture today, so this is just a way for us to warm up our body, get our larger muscle groups moving. But it's also a great way for us to use gravity to start to get some extension and length through our chest. So you might even want to take your hands and have your palms facing up to kind of encourage your shoulders to slide down your back. If that doesn't feel good, you can have your palms facing each other, but just think of that openness and that rolling down through your shoulders. Do two more out and in, and then come to a halfway position and hold. Little pulses, keeping those heels together and keeping your heels as high as comfortable for you, rooting down through all 10 of your toes onto that foot bar. Last three, two, and one. Go all the way out and separate your heels. Bend your knees to come in, push your carriage out. Those heels are lifted still nice and high, and now your feet are right in line with your sitting bones. You have a straight line from the hips to the knees to the ankles. You can use your breath where you feel appropriate. I'm inhaling out and I'm exhaling in. Do three more, and two. When you're out the next time, stay there and go into running. Drop your right heel, bend your left knee, lift, and do the opposite side. Both heels lift, one goes down. Both heels lift, the other goes down. Start to bring your focus into your breath if you haven't already. Big, deep inhales and big, deep exhales. Good. We'll go just four more here. Four and three and two and one. Lift both heels. Bend the knees to come home. Spin your heels together. Knees wide. Push out. Feet back to parallel. You come home. Feet in a turnout. You go out. You're spinning from your hips to open the legs wide to go out and bring them back to parallel to come in. Good, just that hip joint starting to warm up. Three to go. And two. Do one more, and then let's reverse it. Go out in parallel. When you get out, spin the knees open and come in. Go to parallel, push out. Spin to your V to come home. Parallel to push, and V to come home. Take the biggest, deepest breath you can, sending the oxygen into your body. Two more here, pushing out in parallel, coming back in a turnout, out in parallel, and back in a turnout. Pull your knees into your chest, and we're going to roll safely off to the side and come up. Let's switch our weight and take it to one medium. For me, that is a blue spring. So I'm taking my red springs off. I'm switching to one medium spring. And now we'll need our box. Go ahead and put your box on long position. And then have a seat with your feet on the headrest facing your tower. Pick up your straps. Put them right in your hands. Now let your shoulders roll down your back. Let your ribs draw in. Think of lengthening through the crown of your head. You're going to pull your palms right back behind you 
and then resist forward. Now you want to be careful you're not going so far back that you start to round your shoulders forward. You want to keep that spine really long and just think of a little press from your lats. So the middle of the back is pressing back and resisting forward. Not a huge motion, keeping that spine really long, those corset muscles drawing in, the crown of the head reaching to the ceiling. Three to go. And two. Now hold your next one back and I want you to hinge forward. Remember, we are not rounding. You're keeping the spine long and you are hinging. Bend your elbows push the arms back. Big bend of the elbows, push the arms back. Nice work. I'm still lengthening my spine, but now I'm focusing on hinging forward and reaching those arms long and bent. Two more. One more. Now keep your arms back, come all the way up, pull the arms forward. Let's do a combination. Press the arms back, hinge forward, do one tricep, push the arms back, come out of your hinge, bring the arms forward. You push back, you hinge forward, you do a tricep, and you come back up. Come forward with the arms. Again, you go back, you hinge, you do one tricep, you come back up, that's the hardest part for me, and then you come forward. Just two more, you press, you hinge, you do one tricep, you come up, and release. Let's do one more. Press back, hinge, do a tricep, come all the way up, and release. Nice work. All right, cross your straps and put your elbows right in line with your rib cage. We're going to externally rotate those forearms, keeping our elbows just about an inch from your ribs. First thing you want to make sure you're doing is not breaking at the wrist, so keep your wrist really straight and strong. Good, we're just rotating. So far we've been keeping the spine really long. We haven't been doing any extensions, so you're just keeping that spine nice and long and straight. Good, last three. And two. Now when your arms are open, you're going to hold them open and then punch your arms to the sides of the room, pull your elbows back to your waist. Do that again. Punch your arms to the side of the room, pull your elbows back to your waist. Now if it's starting to get too heavy for you and your wrists are starting to break, then I want you to lower your weight because I want those wrists to be really strong and straight and I want this work to be coming from the back. We're really just building heat in our back one of the most important muscles that muscle groups we need to work for our posture. Now, just like we did before, we're going to combine the two exercises. So when your elbows are in, rotate your arms back, rotate them open, then punch, elbows to waist, rotate, close. You rotate open, you punch, elbows to waist, and close. Still keeping that spine really long. Use that breath. Hopefully you're feeling the heat in the back of the body. Last two. And one more. Good. Release the arms and uncross the straps. Third and final set here, we're going to make the little loops. We're going to take the little loops and put them on the forearms and then bring your elbows up in line with your shoulders. Keep your abdominals in, keep your legs squeezing together. Now we're going to open the elbows out to a goal post and add just a little bit of extension if that feels appropriate for you, and then bring your elbows back together. So we're doing just a little extension and open, and then close the ribs back together. So this is different from the first two exercises we did, because now we're opening and extending the spine, which is definitely a safe thing to be doing if you've got osteoporosis. We don't want to be doing any flexion, so make sure when you come back you're not flexing forward, you're coming to neutral, but you're extending and then you're coming back to neutral. Good. Three more. 
and two, and one more. Now take your arms, reach them out to a letter T, and push back and forward. Now I'm going from that T just a little bit lower, so if you tend to be someone who works everything in your traps and your neck, go a little bit lower and that'll take the work out of your upper back and put it where you want it in the middle back. Pressing back and forward and back and forward. We'll go four and three. We're going to combine the two just like we have in the last two sets and one. When the arms are forward, bend the elbows, bring the arms in, open them, straighten the arms, push back and forward. Bend the arms, close the elbows, open the arms, straighten the arms, push back and forward. So you bend and close, you press, straighten, push back. Nice, we're just combining that, keeping the spine long. You can add that little extension if it feels comfortable for you. So you're opening and pressing. And if you need it lower, if you're feeling that in the neck, so that would be a sign that you want to go lower with the arms, just bring the arms down. They do not have to be super high. Good. Last three. And two. And one more. Good job. Okay, when you finish, we're going to put the straps away. I definitely feel heat in my back. I want to take my hands to my back so my palms are facing behind me with my hands to my back. I'm going to sit really tall and go into a little stretch, basically taking my elbows and hugging them behind me and bringing them forward. Now, I'm not hugging my shoulders up to my ears. I'm keeping my shoulders down, but I'm doing a little open and a little close. Because this whole workout is about our posture, our back muscles are really important that we keep those strong, and those are the muscles that are going to keep us upright. But we also need to keep our chest flexible so that we don't end up way rounded. So this is, we're going to be adding a lot of chest stretches through the workout today. So this is the first of a few. So I'm pulling the elbows back, releasing them forward. And the great thing about this exercise is you don't need your reformer. So if you're sitting at your desk at work, you can feel that you're feeling like you need a little break, then you can take this stretch to give your chest a little stretch. Good. Last two. And do one more. Nice. Now that was kind of a preparation for our next set of exercises, which are going to be stretching the chest and strengthening still the back. So this time I want you to add a red spring in addition to the blue spring. So I have one heavy red, one medium blue. I'm going to lay on my belly on the box with my chest off the box. So I'm pretty much right at my bra line. For me, I like my legs with the width of the box and my pubic bones pushing down. Now take your hands to the foot bar. And you're not even going to move the carriage yet. We're going to start with a little extension. So I want you to push your hands gently into the foot bar and do a little back bend. So this will be a little bit bigger than we've done so far today. So you're just extending the spine up. And then you're going back to neutral. And I'm doing just a little push in my hands. Not a huge push, just a little push to lift. And then I'm lowering back down. Now notice where you're looking when you lift. And if you find that you're looking to the wall in front of you, you might be tweaking your neck too much. So what you don't want to be doing is creating this big bend. Just like in our wrist, you don't want that big bend in your neck. You want a natural extension and a natural curve. So when I'm going up, I'm kind of looking down to the floor, just a little bit farther away from me. Good. Now my pubic bone is definitely pushing into the mat, and my legs are really active. I want you to do that one more time, and then after that time, you're going to stop about halfway and hold it there, and now let's push the carriage out and bring the carriage in. And if you're feeling that that's too high in the chest, you can come a little lower. We're just going to be pushing all the way out and back in. Now we're not moving the spine. We're using the strength of our shoulders to push. 
So same thing we did on the, the facing the other way. We'll be doing three different sets. Last two. And one more. Come all the way home and take your heavy red off. You should be left with one medium blue. Second round, you'll start with your legs long, pubic bone down. You're going to lift your sternum slightly. We're going to lift both arms off of the foot bar, and then both arms come back. So you're lifting, doing that kind of a little squeeze of your shoulders down your back, and then releasing. You're doing a little lift and squeeze and a release. So now we're working against gravity. Gravity's trying to pull us down. It always is. And we're trying to resist that. Good. I know it's a lot of back, so if it's too much extension, take a rest anytime you need. I want you to do two more times, just lifting and lowering, and one more time. Now keep the right hand on the foot bar. Your left arm is going to reach to the letter T. If it's more comfortable, it can also be behind your back. I want you to put the push with just the right arm all the way out and then resist back in. So I'm trying to not move my spine at all. Keep everything nice and straight as I just push through that arm. Now my elbow on my right arm is angled just a little down. So I don't want to angle it too high up and bring my shoulder up to my ear. I want to keep my elbow down and my shoulder down away from my ear. Two more here. And one more. And then let's come home. Before we switch, we'll release both hands. Wiggle your hips kind of side to side. Give them a little rest. And we have one more set of extension and then the left side to go. So this time for our extension, push your pubic bone down, reach your legs long, do a little extension. We're going to lift both arms. If that is comfortable for you, you're going to send the arms back to a little bit bigger extension. Bend your arms and lower down. So we're lifting, then you reach the arms back, bend the arms back to the front, and lower down. You can always stick with one of the first two variations if this one is a little too challenging. Okay, working on that posture, great postures, not only stretching the chest, it's strengthening in the back, and it's also some with your abs and your lower body, which we haven't got to yet, but we will. So we're just lifting up, pressing back, bending, and releasing. Lifting up, pressing back. It's always the abs, right? You can't do anything without your abs. One more, and release. Now let's lift up just a little, left hands on the foot bar, right arm to a T or behind the back, keep that left elbow down, and start your presses. And I know everyone's going to be a little different, so if this weight that I'm suggesting for you is too heavy, you can take it down. If this weight is too light, you can take it up. Just be honest with yourself that you're not muscling through a workout just trying to do a heavier weight. You want to always think about your form first. Three to go. And then here's two. And then one more. Really good job. Let's come in and gently slide off to the side. Okay, just two changes to make. We're going to put the foot bar in the down position. And we're also going to put the box into a short box position. You'll still be on that medium blue spring. I talked about abs, right? Now it's time for some abs. So our elbows are going to go onto the box. Your knees are on the carriage. Your feet are against the wood. Strong abs will also help you with your posture. We're going to take an inhale, push into your forearms, push into your feet, lift your knees, hover, push all the way out, come all the way in, and set the knees down. We will ladder that again. You'll lift up. This time, go twice, all the way out and in. Don't touch. All the way out and in. Then you touch down. 
as you can tell, we're laddering up. And that way, if you're feeling at any point overwhelmed, you can just stay where you feel comfortable. Maybe it's at one and then rest, or two then rest. The next one I'm going to is a four, then a rest. And you can build up as you feel stronger. Okay. After four, you rest. I'm building up to six. So next one is five. Now with planks, it's kind of the opposite. More weight is going to give you more support. And then I'll come down. The last one will be six. So if a blue spring, medium spring isn't working, add a yellow light or take it to a red. Three to go. And two. And one. Really good. Let's set the knees down and rest. <laughs> okay, a little stretch before we go to the next thing. So we're getting pretty warm with our upper body, so let's do a deeper chest stretch. I'm going to be facing my left arm is going to go onto the box with my elbow and forearm on the box. My right hand is on the gray surface, and my knees are going to be just a little bent. I'm going to kind of push that left shoulder down and take a little chest stretch. Now, this might not work for everyone. You might need to keep your knees bent. You might need to come down to your right elbow. It really just depends on your flexibility. You're just, again, letting gravity give that chest and shoulder on your left side a little stretch. Now, the other request that I'm building into this workout was for post-surgery after um, breast surgery, which I've got a number of, not a number, but I've got two clients um, that are in person with me that just love all of the things that we do on the reformer to just stretch the chest. It just feels really good, and it's such a great thing to be doing after um, surgery. So let's take one more second here. And then we'll release all the way and do the other side. So I'm just going to walk around so I'm even. So I've got my right forearm on the box. Your left hand can be on the gray surface. Your knees are going to be bent. Remember, we're not rounding the back at any point. You're keeping your back flat. If you need it bigger, you can drop to your left elbow. What you should, not should, I hate that. Sorry, I don't know why they use that word. You, you, what I'm wanting you to feel is your right shoulder your chest, you're kind of pushing gently down, not overdoing it, but you are pushing gently down away from the box, down to the floor to get this release in your right chest. I've used this in a few different workouts. This is not a Pilates move. This is a yoga move, but I love it here. I just love blending all the different disciplines onto the reformer. Good. Now let's gently come up and walk around to the first side. Okay, you can kind of shake that out. I'm feeling really good and loose. Go to a heavy red spring. Take your medium blue off. Carefully put your right foot on the gray surface and your left foot on the moving surface and come to standing. Keep all the weight in that right leg that's on the stable surface. Bend your right leg, straighten your left leg, and push your arms over your head and then come back. So I slipped a little on that left leg, which is why I like to have my foot at the very edge, and that just gives me a little bit of support. That's just how I like to have my foot. I know some people like to wear those grippy socks or have a little pad. That might help too. So I'm going down and circling the arms over my head. Now my weight's going way back into my hips every time I go down. Nice job. Two more here. And then hold your next one down. Take your left leg, bend it in, and do a cactus position with the arms, and then push it, kind of like that goal post again. So you bend your arms, bend your leg, push it back. Bend your arms, bend your legs, push it back. So you're getting that little extension through your chest every time you bend your leg in. 
three more, then we will combine the two exercises together. And one more. Now straighten, keep the left leg straight, come home, go back out, cactus as you bend the left knee, straighten, come back to the start. You come all the way in, you go out, you bend, and you press. Good work. Come all the way in, go out, you bend, and press. Not too many more. Go all the way out, you bend, and press. Really good job. Last two. Go out, you bend, and press. One more here. Go all the way out, bend, and press. Come all the way home. Carefully put your hands on the box. Turn to face your box. Square your hips to the box. Remember, we are not going to do any flexion, so you want your back to be flat. If you need to prop yourself up on a higher box, like maybe the moon box on the box, you can do that, but I want your spine to be long. Your left heel's dropping underneath the carriage, and you're getting a calf stretch. Your hips are very square with your left hip pushing back and your right hip pulling forward. And only if you feel you need a bigger stretch, you're going to start to scissor the legs out. So I'm getting a big stretch through the back of my left leg and even into the back of my right leg. So my calves are stretching. And the soleus, which is now a different muscle. But I don't know the new, I don't know the new name, but that's the old name of it. And then let's come all the way in and switch. Take your right foot, ball the foot on, drop your right heel. I don't know why they had to change the name of a muscle. And you're going to stay here, L nice, long, straight spine. You can drop that right heel even more. And then if you want a bigger release, you're going to go out a little farther. Just make sure you're not rounding your back getting that big release through the back of the leg. Good, now let's come up. So I've got my right toe kind of at the edge, my left toe's at the edge, I'm standing up tall. Bend your left leg first and circle the arms. Straighten your left leg, circle the arms down. So I'm going over the head, right back down. My weight is pushing back into my hips. Good. Nice job. You'll do one more, and then you'll bend your right knee and bend your elbows. Straighten your right leg, straighten your arms. Think of that little back extension. Every time the arms bend, you do a little extension back to neutral. Keep bending your left knee. Keep your weight in that left leg. Two more before we put it together. One more. Now let's come in, circle the arms. Go out, circle the arms. Right leg, bend, and right leg straighten. Come in, the arms go down. You go out, the arms come up. You bend the arms and the right leg. You straighten the arms and the right leg. Come in, same pattern. You go out, right leg bends, left leg, right leg straightens, left leg comes in. Go out with your left bending, bend your right, straighten your right, come in with your left. Two more, bend the left, bend the right, straighten the right, come in with a left, last one. Good job. Carefully step your hands. I love to have the box here because I can just feel more confident stepping down while I'm holding onto the box. And then we will put the box away. I want you to make sure your foot bar is in the up position. And we're going to actually load our weight up so we have a one heavy red, one medium blue, and one light yellow. Now I'm going to start over here with my left foot on the floor because that's where my little box is, and my reformer's pretty high, so I'm on my box. 
my right foot is up against the shoulder block. Come down to your elbows and then lift your right knee. Now this is a heavier weight than I usually do, but we're gonna really fire up those glutes. We talked about how important those are for your posture. So I'm gonna push all the way out, all the way in, all the way out, all the way in. So I'm pushing out and in with that right leg. Good, do one more. Come halfway in and do little pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now push out six times. We're kind of laddering six full extensions. And five, four. Keep your left leg a little bent. Two, and one. Now six pulses. Six, five four, three, two, one. Go for four, all the way out. And three, two, and one. Now pulse it, four, three, two, one. Doubles, two out, two out. Pulse it, two, two. Now singles, push one out. Come in, one pulse. One out, one in, one pulse. You've got it, out, in, pulse, out, in, pulse. Two more, out, in, pulse. Last one, out, in, pulse, release. Take your blue and yellow off. You should have one heavy red. Push all the way back and take it into a stretch. Now in this stretch, I want you to pull your abs in, drop your tailbone down, and firmly push your right knee into that carriage. Make sure your upper body's relaxed though. You're seeing with, I know it doesn't look like anything's happening, but I am really pushing my right knee into that carriage. And I'm going to push, I've got my watch in front of me, for 15 seconds, really hard. So push, Push, we're opening that hip flexor. Holding, squeezing, pushing. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. We're gonna do that one more time. So it's just kind of this deeper stretch called a PNF stretch where you're actively stretching. So push your knee down, tuck your tailbone, Push that knee down, but don't let the tension come into your head, neck, and shoulders. I'm pushing down. I'm holding for five, four, three, two, one, and release. Good. Bring your carriage home. Put your left knee up against the shoulder block and take it into a little deeper stretch. We're going to do that same PNF type stretch here. Make sure that you're not overarching and letting your ribs drop. Pull your ribs in. Drop your tail down. Now push your knee down, down, down. Like you're trying to drive your knee into the carriage and push your hip flexor forward. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Release. It's a great way to, to really stretch the front of the body to improve our posture. Last one, really push. Drop that tail down. Pull your abs in. Push your knee down. Should be active. Build some heat here. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Nice job. Let's come in. Before we do the other side, we're going to do a little chest stretch here. So I'm going to slide my feet way back on the headrest. I'm going to put my elbows onto the foot bar, and then I want you to drop your chest down. So you're just gonna let gravity sink that chest. This is actually a really great stretch to those lats. It's another muscle that can get over tight, so we're just gonna stretch those lats, stretching the chest, letting gravity help us again. We're just gonna hold this, just breathing easy in and out.
Take one more breath. Good, and then you'll make your way up. Now let's do our second side of that glute work. So I'm going to step off to my right side. I'm going to add a blue spring and a yellow spring. So I have one heavy red, one medium blue, one light yellow. Elbows on the foot bar, left knee lifted, left foot up against the shoulder block. We did eight full presses all the way out and in, really driving through that glute. Two more. And now eight pulses at the halfway point. Eight, seven, keep that spine long. And again, six, push all the way out and in, laddering down, five, four. One more, come halfway, pulse, six, Now out for four, four, three, two, one, pulse for four, three, two, one, now two, almost there, now pulse two, now let's do singles, we did six of them, out and in, pulse, release, out and in, pulse, release, doing great, out and then you're halfway there, three, pulse, release, two, pulse, release, one, pulse, release, rest. Take your blue and yellow off. You should have one heavy red. You're going to push back, hands on the foot bar this time, and push back into your lunge. Now, again, you want to make this a powerful lunge, an active lunge. So I'm pulling my abs in. I'm dropping my tailbone down. Again, 15 seconds, I'm going to push my left knee firmly down. That's going to drive open my left hip flexor. I'm doing a little, sl little slight back bend. Five, four, three, two, and rest. Maybe you can go a little deeper. We'll do that one more time, just like on the last side. So here we go, push that knee down. That's gonna open up through my hip flexor. I'm driving that knee down. I'm tucking my tailbone back and down, pulling my abs in, holding for five, four, three, two, one, release. Come all the way home. Now put your knee back against the shoulder block, a little deeper stretch here. Make sure that your ribs are drawing in your tailbone's dropping, you're getting the stretch in the hip flexor, you're not just dumping in the abs. All right, here we go, put some push into it. Push that knee down, push the knee down, but don't tense up through the upper body. Holding, breathing, five, four, three, two, one, release, go a little deeper. One more to go. Who knew stretching could be so hard, right? You can make it hard. So you're dropping your tail, pulling the abs in, push, push into that knee, getting that release of your hip flexor. And it's not just the upper body that's responsible for our posture. It's tight muscles in our lower body as well. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Especially if you spend a lot of time sitting, those hip flexors can get really, really tight. All right, let's come back up. One more round of our lat and chest stretch. Come into the center. Your feet are going way back against the headrest. Elbows go to the foot bar. Hands in prayer position. And you're just going to let gravity sink your chest down. And then let's come back to the hands. Put on an additional medium blue spring. You should be at one heavy red. One medium blue. Let's lay all the way down. We have just a few minutes left. And we're going to finish these few minutes with little um, circles with our legs and straps. Just to kind of loosen everything up in those legs. So I want you to reach the legs long. Again, make sure that you have a neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Your legs are going to go down to about a 45 degrees. You're going to open the legs out and around and bring the legs together. 
Remember, we're working with an osteoporosis safe workout, so we're not doing any flexion of the spine. So no lifting of that tailbone, making this a very small circle. Only moving the legs, but not moving the spine. Last two here, circling in this direction. And then when you get up to the top, we're going to reverse and circle the opposite direction. So you're going to open, pull down and together, and then go right up the middle. You're going to open, pull down and together, and right up the middle. Three more. And two. And then one more. Now when your legs are down to about that 45 degree angle, you're going to pause. The best hip flexor stretch is what we're finishing with. So I want you to bend your right leg like you're trying to stand on the floor beside the carriage with that right foot. As you bend the right leg, your left leg is going to pull up to the ceiling. Be very careful that you're doing a little imprint. You're not, or you're not letting your back arch. So you want to keep a neutral pelvis. So don't think arch your back. Think keep it neutral. And you can feel that big release in the hip flexor. We've already done quite a bit of stretching in that area. So you might feel an even bigger stretch. You might even be able to, able to go a little deeper. The left leg will eventually make its way all the way out to the left, and you're going to hold this big release. For some reason, it feels even more intense. I don't know if that's because I stretched so much already. I can get a little bit deeper, but it's definitely feeling like a big, big release. When you're ready to come out, you will pull the left knee back to the center first, Bend the left leg, and then as you push your left leg straight, all of the weight goes in your left. You can very carefully bring your right leg up with no work in that leg whatsoever. Your legs are at a 45-degree angle for the second side. Bend your left leg like you're trying to foot, put your foot on the floor beside the carriage. Then start to lift your right leg to the ceiling. Make sure you're not arching your back. The right leg will go open to the right. Open to the right. My box is in the way. <laughs> so I'm just going to rest my leg in the box. There. Get that nice release. Just a few breaths here, holding this hip flexor stretch. When you're ready to come back, the right leg will go to the center. Very important that you bend the right leg and start to push. That means all the weight is off of the left and you can safely bring the left leg around and then push both legs long. Now keep your tailbone grounded. Do not let your back round. Bring the legs up to the ceiling, grab onto the tape and give it a little pull. So I'm not going into any flexion of my spine. I'm keeping my tailbone grounded so my feet are not as close to me as you may have seen them in the past because I don't want to be rounding my back. I'm keeping my back relaxed and neutral. And then bring the soles of the feet together, come into that butterfly. You can bring your feet down and rest them on the carriage or they can be up a little bit, but again, stay neutral in your spine. And then we will take the straps off your feet, put the straps back onto the pegs, roll yourself all the way off to the side and bring yourself up. Okay, well hopefully you enjoyed that 45 minutes. I definitely feel a lot more stretch in my chest, a lot more strength in my back. Even my low body feels um, nice and stretched. 
Thank you so much for working out with me and I hope to see you soon.